Welcome back to Dr. E's YouTube channel. And today I have got a really great adventure for you. This started at about five o'clock this morning when our students and some of our faculty left the Uinta Basin campus on a road trip down to the Book Cliffs of Utah. They left in a blizzard. They had terrible driving conditions. It took them about two hours longer than normal to get where we wanted to go. And on the way, they stopped and picked up some students from the wildlife program at the Price campus, along with Dr. Mike King. Dr. King arranged today's adventure for us. And what we've been out here doing is we've been going to a black bear den where the female has been hibernating. Well, let me tell you how it went. I told you about leaving uh, Vernal, driving through the blizzard. Well, then those folks met up with me just outside of Moab, Utah, and then we had to drive up to the Nash Wash Wildlife Management Area with uh, biologists and other personnel from the Utah Division of Wildlife. Our leader was biologist Brad Crompton, and Brad's a great guy. He was, he was really nice to take us along on this adventure. Well, we met up down on I-70, and then we had a long, slimy trip up the road. Uh, the road was really muddy from the, the blizzard that had been blowing on, all the snow, all the rain, all those kinds of things. We got stuck a couple times, we had to drag trucks out, all that kind of stuff. But finally, we made it to the old Cunningham uh, historic homestead up in the Book Cliffs. From there, we got all our gear together. Brad turned on the radio telemetry receiver, got a signal on the bear and where the bear might be, and we took off up the canyon hiking. We hiked for about two hours in the snow, and you can see we got some pretty deep snow here today. This is, this is real stuff. Uh, so we hiked and hiked. Brad kept checking the radio. We would take breaks. Eventually, we found the bear den. Once we found the bear den, uh, and the way we found it, we got to a spot where the signal was really strong, and Brad said he thinks it's around here somewhere. So he hiked around a little bit, and Guess how he found it? All he had to do was listen for those little bear cubs crying. I'm going to I'm going to switch over to that right now and let you hear that so I won't be talking for a minute. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? You can see right there is the outside of the bear den. Well, the next thing we did, Brad started to prepare the drugs that he was going to use to drug the female, okay? Because we needed to do some work with the bear. What Brad wanted to do was replace the radio collar that was around the bear's neck. Batteries wear out, so Brad wanted to replace that with a fresh set of batteries and a new collar. And then we also had, had to uh, see if the the what the sex was for the cubs that were in there, see how many cubs there were, see how the health was for the mama bear, see how the health, wa health was for the cubs. So Brad fixed the drugs, climbed inside, down into the den head first, and then he used a dart pistol to shoot a dart with the drugs into the female. We then waited about 10 minutes, went back in, crawled down in there head first, and grabbed those cubs and handed them out. Okay, now, it's pretty cold out here. It's maybe about uh, 30 degrees, and when we have those cubs outside the den while we're working on replacing that radio collar, we need to keep them warm. So what did we do? We opened up our jackets and we put those cubs inside, kept them warm with our body heat. Really, really cool adventure. Gotta tell you, I was pretty worked up about this. This was really neat stuff. This is what, this is what we go to school for. This is what you, uh, what you live for, is to do this kind of work taking care of the environment out here. Our students had a really great time and experience on this trip. Okay, now, what happens next? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I wanted to get a look at that bear den. So I climbed down in there head first myself to take a look at that female. And she was in great shape, really looking good after the winter, still has some body fat on her. She looks like she's ready to, to come right out of there and start feeding on all the grasses that are out here in the book cliffs. That's what she feeds on mostly after a long winter, believe it or not. She comes out and has salad. She has all that grass. Brad told us that's the primary uh, food that bears eat here in the book cliffs after they come out of hibernation. Well, what do we do next? Well, we finished up with the bear. We put those little babies back in there and then we gather up all of our equipment and we're gonna start the hike out here in a few minutes. 
It's late in the afternoon. Uh, we still have about an hour, hour and a half hike to get out of here. And those folks from Vernal still have about a six hour drive. They'll get home around midnight tonight. Well, this has been a really great adventure. And, and what I'd like to do this time, instead of just giving you my contact information, what I'd like to do is give you the contact information for Dr. Mike King at the Price Campus. In addition to having the wildlife program at the Unit Basin Campus, we also have a wildlife program at the Price Campus. And feel free to email Dr. King, call Dr. King, and you'll be able to find out about the program there. Well, I'll tell you what, I gotta get my, get my act together here. I gotta grab some munchies to eat, get my energy back up again so I can start that, that hike out of here. And uh, join me again on my YouTube channel where you're gonna see about all the cool stuff we do here at Utah State University at the Uinta Basin in wildlife science. We'll see you guys later. Go Aggies! <laughs>